Hi, and welcome to Learn DaVinci Resolve. Today, we're taking a question from Siegfried, who asked if I could replicate a analog clock display that he found in After Effects. Well, here is the final result of that. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you how to do this. And you should watch all the way to the end because there's going to be a big surprise at the end on something else to do using the same technique that I think you guys are going to find super, super cool. So stay right there. I'll be right back. What we're going to start with is graphics for each of the components. So I've got a clock face, a second hand, minute hand, hour hand, um, just some real simple stuff. I just grabbed a clock face off of Google Images and I just made some lines in uh, Photoshop to do the minutes. What we need to do is, well, okay, first off, there's several different ways of doing this. We could do this strictly in 2D and get the same effect, but I'm gonna do it in 3D. And there's gonna be a reason for that that I'm gonna show you near the end um, using the exact same techniques that I'm gonna show you with the clock face, we're gonna do something really, really cool uh, at the end. So stay tuned for that. So what do I need to do for each of these to get them into a 3D space? I need an a um, image 3D an image plane 3D. Now that's going to allow me to position this in space. So the first thing I'm gonna do, well, I'm also gonna add a merge 3D so I can start seeing everything together and that I will connect to my output. Oops, oops, can't do that yet. I need a render 3D and then I can connect to my media out. So I'm gonna to go to my merge 3D put that over in number two, and I'm gonna have my image plane selected. And I wanna make sure each thing is on its own plane, otherwise we might get some flickering um, during the animation. So I'm just gonna take the clock face and just push it back a little bit. Nothing crazy there. All right, so let's start with the second hand. Again, I'm just gonna do an image plane and we're going to need to do something a little bit different here. Okay, I'm actually going to uh, put media out over here and we'll zoom in to it so we can see what we're working on. Okay, so if I take this image plane, I drop it on my merge, I'll need to resize this to probably 0.07. Something um, uh, 0.05, maybe point. Eh, that should probably work. Okay, I'll have this over here so I can, and I, I put the little dot in the middle and on the arm so I could make sure I could kind of line these things up better. See what I did there? So, see if I can get that thing lined up. There we go. Okay, so here's the, the, the thing here. Trying to rotate this around can be a little complicated because um, no matter what I do with the rotation, it's gonna rotate around its center point. So not really what I wanna do. Let's take the Z axis here, oops. So any of these axes is going to rotate around its center point. So to fix that, I'm going to need to add a transform 3D. Now that starts 
the rotation at the center point of the screen, not necessarily the center point of the object. So now if I take and rotate this, you see it's rotating around the center point. Now we just need to give it a way of doing that. Uh, how much time do we want it to, to take? And while we, we don't need it to be exact, what we want it to be is proportional to the minutes and second or the minutes and hours as we go. So we're going to do that with an expression. So I'm going to hit equals in the Z axis. So if my math is correct, I want to go do 15 degrees every frame in order to get 360 degrees in uh, one whole rotation. So the, like I said, the timing isn't going to be perfect. I just want them to all be relational because what good is it to have a real time clock? It's going to be way too slow. People want it to sped up and we can always change the timing. So I'm going to go time times 15, all right? 15 degrees per frame. Well, that's not exactly right. So let's make that time minus 15. All right. And now we have it going in the right direction. So far, so good, right? Okay. So now we need to add the next one. Let's add the minutes. And again, we're going to do an image plane 3D and a transform node. And we'll add that to our merge. Whoa. I hit transform instead of transform 3D. And we can add that to our merge and go back. And we look at what we did on the size. We did 0.04. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. 0.04. And we need to get it lined up. So I'll zoom in. And I might just go ahead and disconnect the other one temporarily so I can make sure I get this guy lined up nice. All right. Put this back in action and now on here we had time times minus 15 to get our seconds so now we need to do it to the minutes to get that accurate so i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to create an expression time times negative 15 and we want to divide this by 60. Okay, so let's go to fit here, go to single screen, and let's see what we've got. So for every rotation of the second hand, we move one tick of the minute hand. So that's working good, although I'm seeing a little flicker on here when they move, you see how they're kind of overlapping here. So I'm going to take this next one, the minute, and I'm going to push it back just a hair. I just want it sitting behind it. There we go. Much better. Okay. It's time to do the same thing again for the hours. So what do we do? An image plane 3d followed by a transform 3D. And let's double check our sizes, 0.04. So I'll come over 0.04. I'm gonna push that one back just a little bit, disconnect the other ones connect this one up 
So now I can see my alignment. Get her in the ballpark, zoom in, get that thing adjusted just right. Perfect. Okay, now we need to do a little bit more math to figure out the last one. And I'll do a fit. So on this guy, here we had time times negative 15 divided by 60. I'm going to copy that, go to my next transform, hit my equals. My expression is going to be 15 divided by 360. So now, if I've got my math all correct, this should work properly. So for every rotation of the second, we get one tick of the minute hand. And if we scroll down towards the end of this, not quite a full uh, 30 minutes on here, but you can see the hour hand is ticking over where it needs to be. Go back to our edit and we'll let this render for a moment. All right, now that it's rendered, let's give it a playback. And it's looking nice and smooth. Okay, well, what if we don't wanna start at noon? That would be a great question. So let's kinda of get things organized here. Pull these guys over, get my merge 3D out of the way. So now if we wanna start the timer, start the clock at a different time, we need to change kind of the offset of where it's going to begin. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna clean up this expression over here and kind of separate it into two chunks. The time times my divisor. And what I wanna do here is add in the offset for um, the time. So if I want to start it at one o'clock, I'm going to say time plus 720 should give me one o'clock. There we go. 720. If I do 2160. I should get three o'clock. So by adjusting the parameters here, you can adjust when the clock starts and the duration. If you want the hands to go at different speeds, you can control all that. So this should answer the question on how to do an analog clock face in here. Now, I'm, as I said earlier, I'm gonna show you something really crazy. So I'm actually gonna go back to my edit screen here and what I've done is uh, well I'm just gonna play it uh, so you can see how the final outcome is so this is using the exact same techniques we have a ball that's spinning and we have another ball on the outside that's spinning and it's rotating and it's all done using the exact same methods other than instead of image planes I turned them into spheres pretty simple image shapes instead of spheres and you can create something like this just as easily using the exact same methods so if we take a look at this one we'll go into fusion and you can see it looks very very similar I have the background so let's uh, so this is the shape for the moon or the texture for the moon. Here's the texture for the planet. And here's the background with the stars. That one's on a plane. The other ones are just spheres. I added a 3D camera to be able to kind of change the positioning of where I wanted it. 
there's a spotlight in order to provide the shadows and a little just a little bit of ambient light in order to create kind of that that glow all the way around so if i put this back up in two and give this thing some room to breathe here so without the ambient light the back side was completely black so i just added a tiny bit of ambient light in order to be able to get it kind of dialed in to uh, just give it a little bit more perspective there now one tip when you're working with resolve or fusion i should say is you want to go into the memory settings you want to make sure that your memory usage for resolve is cranked up as much as you can and it will only go to 75 percent of your system ram so crank it all the way and then limit fusion memory which will only go to 75 percent of the memory that resolve has and i crank that up all the way as well then you want to restart resolve so that it, that setting takes effect and that will help out when you're working with fusion quite a bit so hopefully this was a good tutorial and it answered the question on how to do the analog clock, but also gave you an insight of how to use those same techniques to do something like these 3D planets. Hope you liked it. If you did not like this and you're thinking about pressing that down, uh, the thumbs down on this, please leave a comment. Let me know what you didn't like about it so that I can try and make my videos better. If you did like it, hit like, hit subscribe, and click on that bell icon to get notified every time I put out a new video. So as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I will catch you next time. Bye-bye.